Hi, welcome back to Balanced Health. Today's episode is on core training, and joining us to demonstrate some core exercises all of us can do at home is Dr. Terry Smith, who was with us a minute ago. He's a chiropractor and a certified strength conditioning specialist. And we also have Corey on the floor down there. Hi, Corey. Special assistant Corey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Dr. Smith is going to show us some exercises that any of us can do to strengthen our core, which was amazing to me that it's below the neck to the knee. Well, right? you know, this is, this is so, it can be almost any exercise you can consider core. It's just kind of what you're trying to engage. Okay. And you can do everything from simple stuff just on a floor to some more, you know, on a ball or a med ball. Okay. And it can be real simple. And this is kind of the basic position where you can start with core exercise. So anybody, I think, could lay on the floor. You've got to go to sleep at night, right, Joe, yeah. sometime. So right here, the most important thing to do when you're engaging your core, and let's just call core right now from kind of here to here, okay. is to engage the abdominal muscles and kind of sucking the belly button or pressing it towards the floor. Okay. okay. This is the most important concept is to keep the lumbar spine almost pushing against my hand into the floor. This is the most important part of this whole deal. Mm. Okay, so number one, really simple. We've seen crunches before, but now do a crunch while engaging, you know, pushing the hand against the floor. Do a simple crunch core and come on up, and that engages a lot of the midsection here, the abdominal muscles. A lot of times people have back pain. All right. You know, lower this back is pain, lower right? back pain. So do you put like a little something underneath your back to simulate your hand? You can do that. You can put a little towel there or something just to kind of remind you or grab a, you know, your husband or wife or kid and just have them slide the hand because it is very important to feel that contact. And when the, and the coach or, you know, the trainer is trying to help you a lot of times, they can say, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Don't, don't forget to keep pushing. Now, is that like a pelvic tilt where you actually press your back into the, into the floor, right? So you're using some great terminology in core training now, pelvic tilt. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is posterior pelvic tilt is just tipping the pelvis this way mm -hmm. to engage the core into the ground into okay. the floor this is the basic Pilates movement I guess you want to talk about Pilates yeah I was gonna ask you are there other kinds of exercises like you could do in a class that would do the same thing in Pilates, Pilates would be one is of them, one right? and this is the most important thing I would say in Pilates class is that they do a lot of like leg flutters like this right mm -hmm. where the legs kind of flutter yeah. well if the back comes off the ground so I don't feel the pressure against my hand anymore you should not be doing the leg flutters below that level in other words you should stay up higher uh, if that oh thing and that hurts comes. and I've gotten hurt doing that I have come into his office hardly able to walk because I went too far down on that and that and in my case it was my SI joint just popped out and I was in pain so could you show us uh, could you demonstrate for us with Corey how where should we put our legs when we do that okay so as long as the the back is being pushed against my hand and mm -hmm. you can do your leg flutters and you can try and test and come down and see right here he loses a little bit of that oh. um, so not, stop there his back pushing. comes off the ground yeah right? and if you keep doing leg flutters in that region where there's no support that's when you start straining the lumbar spine and the core muscles start to get actually traumatized instead of it being a positive okay. effect so Let's how, do far, another one. Uh, how far up should the legs come well, that's what I'm saying. You, at the beginning, get your Pilates coach or instructor or someone else to test, hey, you should not be going below okay. this point. That's the most important thing. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, a couple, let's use the ball, Cor. Okay. Let's show... Um, <clears throat> these balls are inexpensive, right? Yeah, yes. $10, $15. Just about in. okay. Any sporting goods store has these. You can do a crunch on the ball as well. Basically, same thing. Now you're pushing <laughs> your pelvic you know, area into the ball instead of... Uh, on the floor, so it might be a little bit more. Here's one that I've experienced with this. How far do we do you want this off, and how far do you want this off, and where, where are you getting the most abdominal benefit, and where could you hurt your back if you're too high or low on the ball? See, that's a lot of questions right there. You should get a trainer if you're asking about all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, but let's break break it down into small Costello tidbits. Break it down. Basically, you shouldn't go too far down so that you're uh, missing, you know, the part that you're trying to engage. So okay. the part that you're trying to engage should be centered over the mid part well, of the ball. That's a good answer. Okay. That's, that's and, probably the best thing. And Dr. Terry, can you can I have a bigger ball? Is it oh. like easier? And could I also do the same thing on a bigger ball? Sometimes the bigger balls are better for certain things, but if you get um, off balance, a lot of times it could be worse for you. Okay. So you start on a softer, less air if you're not as trained and okay, the more gotcha. air that you put in the ball the less stable it becomes and the harder or the challenging oh, okay. more challenging the so exercises. how many would be good for that 25 50 you'd be getting a good 25 30 reps okay, of that breathing comfortably one. wow that's try a, a um, how about 10 that's what I <laughs> <laughs> try a uh, superman on the ball or something like that alternating arm and leg on the ball so here's a really basic one that we do in, in physical therapy and chiropractic all the time mm -hmm. we're basically laying over the ball and you're engaging here oh, look okay. at this the whole core is being engaged the calf hamstring glutes opposite side and it Let's get a wide over. shot of that, guys. Let's get a wide shot. Show this again. 
So that's again, Dr. Terry. Okay, so you're getting calf, you know, you're getting hamstring, you're getting the glutes firing, and then the crossover effect into the upper erector spinae and into the posterior deltoids, and even the wow. triceps and forearm is getting engaged. Hmm. This is not a very easy exercise to do and hold. As you can see, the longer you hold, it starts to shake. So that's a really good core exercise. So aesthetically, that's good for muscle toning. For therapy-wise, that's good for all those areas you're talking about for if you have pain in, right? Yeah, it's a simple balanced exercise that You've we can use. You've had me do this before. I after did. After coming out of your office, okay. In 2001, I remember that. <laughs> How long do you have to hold, hold that position? You know, even a count of one, two, good enough, oh, you know, good. something like good. that. Okay. But the longer the and hold. And then switch legs. And then and alternate arms. arm and but leg. This would be a good show for people to actually get the DVD up because they could play these Absolutely. things back. Yes, What's you next? Okay. Yeah, because they're going through really fast. So uh, We can do, uh, here's a great one with the core ball. These are things now, they come in all different types types of weights. This is an eight pound mm. uh, ball. We can do something called pocket pickers. And this is a little bit higher up on the chain of core stability. Okay. And where he's actually engaging his core, he's doing like a sit up, holding a sit up, and mm. he's actually twisting. Oh so you're adding now the side portions, the obliques, and mm -hmm. part of the hip flexors are being engaged in this. So he's getting a lot more training effect than just a simple straight up and down motion. So he's Does getting that hurt, Corey? <laughs> I was going to keep but talking again, until he started to, you know. But again, so aesthetically, he's going to get some six-pack look out of this. And physical therapy-wise, he's building strength in his section here to help yep. support the muscles and joints in his back area, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Terry, I have a lot of shoulder pain. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, is there something that Corey could show me? Oh, is that one of your exercises that would be actually good for shoulder and upper back? Okay, so for shoulder and upper back core, there's a lot of different things. Just a simple one, we don't need much equipment, flip over and do supermans on the ground. Oh, okay, okay yes. So instead of, um, here we go, he's just engaging core, okay. posterior deltoid. And the biggest problem with most people with shoulders is that it's forward and, and this way. We're forward dominant so we sit, posture. We yeah. sit at the computer, yeah. So keeping the shoulders mm. down and back. Okay by engaging the upper, trape upper trapezius, middle trapezius, lower trapezius, and posterior deltoids, that's gonna really help strengthen, keep the shoulder down and back. The other one, even during your, when you're driving in the car, we always say keep the thumb like this and oh. kind of engage and kind of flex and keep your shoulder down and back like that. Simple one you can do in the car. Excellent. How Anything about for else? people like with hip pain, hamstrings, glute <coughs> pain, oh, stuff like that? Oh, here's a great hamstring one. Actually, you can use the ball for it and you can put his heels on the ball and he's gonna lift his body up like that and oh, look yeah. at this. Oh wow. If you've never done this exercise for hamstrings, if you've never felt a good hamstring burn, this is probably one of the best ones to ever do. And if you get really good, you can go single leg. Oh wow. And look how much core he has to keep. Oh my gosh, keep. his abdomen has gotta be feeling that. You're yeah. disgusting, Corey. <laughs> yes, Corey's, exactly. Corey's been doing this a long time. He's a master trainer, so. But, so, but, by, but by doing this for your hamstrings, by having a, a solid base here, there's mm -hmm. less compensation here I'm just trying to draw the picture for people, how this stuff's all connected, and, all and connected. doing this is a good workout. And if they don't think they're going to get any cardio out of this or any sweat out of this, just, just tell them to do <laughs> it, right? Can you hear him breathing? Can you yeah. hear him? I mean, he's breathing pretty hard. You're getting hard cardio here. out of this. You'll get a good sweat out of this, surely. It's, it's good for your joints, awesome. your bones, your hips, this whole core thing that we're talking about. And again, we're talking about a little area here. You could do this in your family room while you're watching your favorite TV show, and all you need is a couple of these balls, yeah. $20, $30, $40, and a little bit of time. So you don't need a lot of equipment to do this? No. That's Show excellent. that one really awesome, uh, we do uh, knee tuck-ups. Um, we use this as a progression, and you're a little bit weaker, you start it kind of in the mid part of your body, and you're just doing like a push-up position, so you're stabilizing oh. the upper body, and now you're doing still abdominal work and pelvic work and everything, mm. and you have to keep stable from not falling off the ball, so you're using those little stabilizer muscles, which are, you know, that's really what core strength is about, is all these stabilizing muscles and stuff. So when you come to athletics and performance, you can make your body go in directions faster because you have a better control of balance like this. Well, one of the, one of the exercises my, my doctor gave me with the ball is just to balance yourself on it. Just to balance yourself on it, you know, and, and to bounce up and down and stuff because that's helping, right? That's a huge well, you know stimulus. What, you'll find that when they first do this, that's going to be the first thing they're going to spend 10 or 15 minutes yeah, on. Bouncing, just, it's and fun. And you're getting your balance on that ball, it's right? It's a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. the way he's doing it is a guy who's, you know, in tip-top shape. So, um, you know, I work out all the time, and when I do these exercises, I'm, I'm – Believe me, I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's but cardio it's, also. It's something that I've incorporated into, into my life now. And my, my children do all their abdominal stuff on this ball. And some people, when they do so, abdominal, especially if they don't do it right, they get, they get hurt back here. Mm. This really eliminates by supporting that back area there. Am I right, Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith? This was a way to do abdominals without having those back injuries. Super. So. Thanks, I think we guys. Have, that was do, awesome. Do we have any more time? If you, you have time for one more? 